I've talked about the peptide epitalon many times and its ability to increase telomere rays and therefore extend telomere length and I'm consistently seeing it in my data. There's even a brand new study coming out of Brunel University confirming its telomere extending effect in vitro and I'm going to be the first person to interview the scientist. But today I wanted to share my results not only looking at telomere length but also other aspects of health and aging like immune function and lipid peroxidation and so I'll be touching on other peptides that have synergy with epitalon in particular you've got thymolin as well as violon so giving some context my telomeres got the shortest they've ever been in March 2024 and then I made huge improvements in telomere length cycling epitalon every quarter for 20 days doing one milligram a day so I've got them up and then they were at uh, 7.1 kilobases or 7.18 to be precise, which is a massive jump from what they were in March, 6.75. Obviously, poor lifestyle factors were driving that initially. I was working myself into the ground, high cortisol levels, a lot of oxidative stress. And but the epitalon seems to have helped there, and then consistently since then, they've just been getting incrementally longer. Because you gotta remember, each year that goes by, you typically lose around 50 to 100 base pairs. And so by February, they've gone from 7.18 to 7.25, and then as of uh, late July, now they're. 7.1 uh, 7.3 so still an incremental movement i'm beating the clock and at the point of testing back on july 24th i've actually just started another cycle of epitalon so the changes are really taking into account three months before back in april when i last did it because normally i would wait at least a few weeks after doing epitalon to test my epigenetics because that's taking into account long-term trends but in this particular instance this was a repeat test because my past one uh, back in may had an error and what happens is because i'm doing things that shift my metabolic my fuel source from being more lipolysis i go from that to extreme to uh, lipolysis uh, if you're doing that mid-cycle doing an epigenetic test that can actually give errors because the methylation patterns are just changing so dramatically moving forward to avoid any lab errors i'm not going to be doing any intense cycles for around three weeks before that test and because this is exactly what happened with my pace of aging it jumped up artificially because i did an, a cycle of focto 4 dri which is a very intense senolytic peptide and i only i completed that just four days before doing this test which is not ideal but i, I wanted to get the results i needed that data and by using the omic clock as well as true health i was able to identify other areas that were increasing my rate of aging and then uh, on the topic of epitalon, so with that true health, there's phospholipase A2, and that's a marker of lipid peroxidation, and epitalon is known to help with that. And a good indicator, if you have high lipid peroxidation, you know, in your skin, you'll see aging spots. And mine is actually nice and low at the 29th percentile, which is great to see. But then, of course, it could be lower still. And then on the topic of antioxidant enzymes, epitalon can help with enhancing them. So you've got, you know, glutathione peroxidase. Mine, again, that could be higher. And then you've got other ones, catalase and uh, superoxide dismutase as well. Also highlighted in a video a few weeks back discussing both uh, delta sleep inducing peptide in conjunction with epitalon. I was showing my sleep performance data. Steadily it goes up like every three months. And then in particular with this cycle, my restorative sleep on top of that as well. And with the epitalon part of the equation, it modulates the pineal gland so it can uh, upregulate uh, uh, melatonin production and therefore sleep. It means you don't need to supplement uh, melatonin because epitalon has a lasting effect. And now moving forward with epitalon, I'm thinking to increase the dose from one milligram a day for 20 days to two milligrams and just see any uh, associations with bar markers i've talked about telomere length i'll go into some others but it'd be interesting to see if i can really extend the telomeres well yes if i was to do something like hyperbaric oxygen therapy then uh, from what i've seen i'll probably get more of a dramatic increase in telomere length but the drawback with it obviously the cost and then there's time as well whereas epitalon obviously it's, it's quite a cheap peptide but other bar markers i'm going to be keeping an eye on uh, obviously the lipid peroxidation, but not just that, uh, you've got 
uh, DRP1 and so if when, when I'm looking at that I want to keep that down at the moment I'm in the 75th percentile so really that's showing a lot of mitochondrial fission so I really want to improve that and epitalon there are some reports that can help with uh, mitochondrial morphology getting that balance between fusion and fission dynamics as well as reviewing my oxidative stress markers they're all pretty high in particular a lantoin and with uh, epitalon being a, a, a foxo4 up regulator and this gene encodes for autophagy also oxidative defense as well as like dna repair check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized there's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change and that increased expression of foxo3 would cross over into thymic output improving uh, my naive t-cell production and that, that leads me on to my immune system it's looking uh, it's not as good as what it once was when i did this test and i'll come on to that because i made improvements since that july 24th test but when you look at my cd4 to cd8 t-cell ratio it's actually falling into the low range which shows thymic involution you know immunosenescence and the data suggests that epitalon has a lot of synergy with that peptide i mentioned earlier thymolin uh, reducing and um, having a greater impact on reducing all-cause mortality and being around four months since my last thymolin cycle it's shown that my immune system did need some support as well as you know look at my naive cd4 cells they're low cd8 cells as well the naive ones so really the, the, these things do help but you do need to support them and uh, since that I actually I was right at the same time as starting at the epitalon when I was doing this test I also started the peptide or bar regulator known as Vylon and this again can help with um, that uh, the immune system like regenerating the thymus gland and it's not just for the immune system I mean there's been other studies in mice heart tissue and it's shown that Vylon well in conjunction with Epitalon they it actually increased the expression of regeneration genes and when you when they're compared alone there's a lot more genes get uh, influenced by it but to touch back on the immune system with Vylon in vitro studies it can uh, help differentiation of lymphocytes pushing them more towards those CD4 helper cells and then also with um, uh, splenocytes as well, it can upregulate IL-2, which is a an anti-inflammatory cytokine. By looking at data moving away from that July 24th date for the TrueAge test, measuring my lymphocytes on August 12th. So this is around when I was just finishing at the Epitalon and I had finished Vylon. Ended up doing 22 days for Epitalon in total. 10 days with Vylon doing two milligrams a day. It's early on in the cycle of Epitalon. And uh, yeah, interestingly, my lymphocytes, they were around 0.9, which is actually better than what they have been in the past. I've even seen them down at 0.78. They've always been low, especially well since I've started doing TRT. And that's a drawback of TRT. It can deplete your lymphocytes as well as like natural killer cells, that kind of thing. And mine has uh, it's got, went from 0.9 and then 20 days later it went to 1.2. And I've, I've never seen that. It's like the highest it's ever been. And so interestingly, so um, it could correlate with, you know, the epitalon, the FOXO3, the, that, that modulating effect. And then also... Um, I was also on SLU PP332, so that's stimulating mitochondrial biogenesis through the PGC1 alpha pathway. So, I mean, that could, by supporting mitochondrial function, that could support those lymphocytes as well. So, I'm just seeing the synergy here, and there's no way of you know, being able to isolate it with a definitive answer, but looking at correlations and then causation can be identified in future by if I'm doing one thing not doing another another time then I can just see uh, different movements there so to conclude I'm going to increase my epitalon dose and see what happens with my telomere length if it has an added benefit as well as my sleep data as well increasing that REM and deep sleep and then uh, with my thymolin 
as I mentioned, I'm doing that, that's, that's every six months. And so what I'm gonna do is continue with that six month period and then do Violon in between that because clearly the immune system, that's a weak area of mine. And the older you get, the more poor amino surveillance becomes a factor for mortality. For my last few cycles of Epitalon, I've been getting it from Peptides of London and they're the ones that supplied Brunel with that groundbreaking study on telomerase. And also in the past, I have been getting it from Swiss Chems as well. And the difference is with them, they had a bit more mannitol in there because I did independent testing on it last year and it was coming in at 85% pure. Whereas in reality, I did have it stored for around seven months and there was a lot of heat changes in that where I was moving and stuff like that. So it might have been higher still, but um, that's the difference with the one from Peptides of London. There's no mannitol, it's like 99% pure. And unfortunately, they're sold out at the moment. So I do hope that I'm told by them that they're going to be improving manufacturing, getting, making sure there's nothing out of stock. And that will be in the next one and a half to two months. And then the same with Violon. I, I got that from Peptides of London. But uh, I, I see Swiss Chems, I believe they're now supplying that one too. So if you've got any feedback with using any of these peptides I mentioned today, then please do comment down below. I'm always interested to hear people's reports in the real world. And say with Epitalon, a lot of people do notice it when they're measuring their sleep data. Thiamolin, I've seen a lot of good reports on that one as well. So if you like that video, then check out this one on both 5-amino-1-MQ and epigenin. They both work on that NED salvage pathway, which is fundamental not just for energy, but also cellular repair. Thanks for watching. See you next time.